Okay, just before we move into turn three, there is an added surprise for turn three, and that is the M action, which is this guy. It now means that we need to check for the M action for Japanese units that are occupied or even unoccupied. The M action can bring things like machine gun fire, mortar fire, muster, multiple fire, all sorts of bad things for us. So we've got to check for that now in any actions. So let's make a start on turn three. Okay, I've set up the troops that are coming in on turn three. And as well as the M action that I just mentioned, there's another surprise for turn three. And that is a different unit, which is these guys, the HQ unit. They've got two steps and a star. We want to keep these guys alive as long as possible and have them in good positions because any units that surround them get a free move and they themselves get a free move. If we go into a combat and we're missing a weapon, then they can stand in for the missing weapon. So. HQ guys are very handy. We want to keep them alive. I'd like to keep everybody alive, but I uh, don't see it happening. So, phase one. We're going to bring in these guys first. So, let's see what card we get. Purple circle. And there is purple here. And luckily... I do have a circle, but he's not on that side, which is pretty handy. So he can move into there. The HQ can move in top. He can move into here, keeping him away from purple. And he can probably go in there. Now, what do we do with this guy? Because we have two, two, and two. You can only have two in a stack. But... The good thing about the HQ is, the HQ doesn't count in a stack. So you can have two and an HQ, and that's well within the rules. So, let's go with that. That was successful. Nobody damaged. Nothing broken. Next, red circle. All good, because there is no red. Um, we don't want to put this guy on top of here because that will make it 8 steps and it will make it a surefire hit um, did I do that over here? I've already done it here uh, oh well ok so these guys are dubious I need to split them up because they're going to end up getting hit next box is blue circle all good. Put one there, we'll put one there. Next. Purple diamond. Purple triangle even. Um, we have a triangle, but we don't have any purple, so that's okay. We'll put that guy there. We'll keep the HQ there. And last but not least, we have the orange diamond. We have a diamond. We have some orange. The HQ can go in there, he's safe. Uh, this guy is a diamond, so he's safe if it was a fire, but uh, landing card, uh, maybe, he's maybe gonna take a hit. Need to look up the table. Table says units of every type, non armored US units with the target symbol. And it's all non armored. Well, that guy's armored. So he gets away with it, but he can't fit in there. But I have just noticed the error of my ways drift right. So this guy needs to go right anyway. So he goes in here. That fixed itself quite well. I almost never noticed that drift right, I do admit. Okay, 
So that's where we sit at the end of phase one. Everyone got ashore, nothing got broken or damaged. Pretty miraculous, really. Next, phase two. Okay, here we go. Card four, uh, the event phase, which is this one. Add a depth marker to one Japanese unit. So, nothing good for us this time. We take a depth marker from the bundle next to the turn track and we need to add it to a Japanese unit. Which one? The rules say go by letters then actions, eh, letters then numbers. So it would be an A first. So there's an A2, there's an A1, neither of those have depth markers so A1 is going to win and get a depth marker. Congratulations to him. In my finest sarcasm. So he gets a depth marker and that's the end of phase two. Okay, time for phase three, the dreaded Japanese fire phase, where potentially we get holes ripped in us. So, card for this one is, and it doesn't have an M, so that's good. We don't have to use the M action, that's a blessing. So, we've got orange, this guy. Let's have a look and see what we've got here. Orange, orange circle. So this guy is potentially going to take a hit. Again. And he's L31. So I now need to find L31. And amongst all these other things. L31. There we go. L31 goes from three steps to two steps. The HQ does not get hit. They're exempt. Um, this one here, K31, I think he's also going to get hit. Because there's a depth marker, so this guy gets two shots. So that guy is replaced. Let's see, orange also means the tank, which is up here, out of shot, uh, it has to move, it'll move to a hex. The blue, I don't know if you can see it, it was right there, and it has now moved to here. So it gets to move. And let's see what else, we killed this guy, so that's good. Nothing else for orange. Next is red. We have red here. Just one, so he gets one shot at us. And there's this guy who got hit last time. We've got the tank here. And we've got this guy who also got hit a while back. We also have the HQ. We don't want him getting hit. HQ, we don't want him getting hit. So. One of the two guys who took a hit last time is going to take a hit again this time. So, let me just find the bit here. E2-1, this guy takes a hit. And that's red. Now, there's also a red tank, which is here. He's going to move to here. Uh, nothing else red. And I don't have any disruption markers to move off. And finally, brown. Brown, we have a brown here. We have a brown here. He's already been hit, so he can't be hit again. He's already been hit, so he can't be hit again. So, nothing happens there. And it's 
brown there, but he's disrupted. So that's good. So we can remove his disruption marker. And he's back in play. And that is pretty much it for the Japanese fire phase, which is pretty lucky for us. Um, and I think that is it for phase three. Ah, but wait, there's more. I knew I would forget something. I knew I would. This here is the artillery symbol, the rectangle with a dot. And there's a three. In fact, I'll just zoom in so you can see it. Just in the corner there. That's the artillery symbol with a three. What that means is, if the Japanese have three or more artillery units, then one of them is going to fire and hit us. Now, where are the artillery units? It's guys like this. Who have that symbol. So there's one there, uh, there's a couple kicking about, there's another one just up here, just off camera I think, that's two, if you check that one, ah, uh, so there's definitely four, there's five, I'm sure I saw another one, ah, uh, one there as well, so they've got six at least of artillery so we need to take a hit and it's got to be somebody with a circle there's a priority for who should get hit though and that is somebody who's in a beach landing box well none of them are in the boxes in a landing beach hex yes we have a whole bunch of people in the landing zones or landing hexes so one of those guys um, in these spaces with a circle has to take a hit. Um, I'm thinking... I was thinking these two guys because I did eight steps and that makes them a prime target. Even if I made it seven, they're still a prime target. So, hmm, somebody's got to take a hit and it could be this guy, but, ah, we'll pick one of these guys. One of these guys can take the hit. Take one for the team. No thanks to Japanese artillery. So, hopefully that is definitely, really seriously, the end of Phase 3. Okay, before we go into... The US action phase. Quick chit chat about uh, movement. Normally a unit can move three hexes at most. Uh, as I said before with the terrain chart that your movement can be limited because of the terrain. And I also mentioned before that you only get two things that you can do per turn. Moves and attacks and so on. But this is where the magic of these HQ guys comes in because any unit that's adjacent to an HQ unit as long as you don't move the HQ unit first any unit surrounding it will get a free move so you know this guy gets a free move this guy gets a free move these two get free moves because of this guy this guy is going to give these two and this and these two free moves. If you move the HQ first, they'll lose the free moves because the HQ isn't there. So you got to move the HQ last. So that's why the HQ is pretty important because we can start to move a whole bunch of people for free, then still have two things that we can do at the end. So the HQs are pretty important. Here we go, phase six. This is the US action phase. This is where it starts getting really complicated because not only, like I just previously mentioned with the HQ, you get 
whole ton of free moves but you still get free moves for the people who've just moved into the beach landing hexes they still get their preservation move that we used before so we've got preservation moves for certain people and the HQ will grant free moves to other people so yeah it gets kind of complicated um, if I was to move say this guy for just an example if I was to move this guy I couldn't move him the three hexes that he could go because as soon as he steps foot into that hex with intense fire he must stop uh, if I move this guy to here for example or to here that would be an infiltration move and we need to draw a card to see if he gets hit so there's a whole bunch of stuff that I need to try and remember and I'm inevitably going to forget something so leave comments shout at me if you like I, I don't care shout at me if you like um, I think we're going to have to move this guy because he just seems to keep getting hit the poor guy but if I move him he's potentially going to get hit again so um, yeah this is just the unluckiest guy ever um, we'll take the chance give him a free move from the HQ there and move him to here I usually put a, a turn on it like that just so I know that I've moved this guy and don't move him again if I get a purple triangle on this card he gets hit no good so he survives his infiltration move HQ is also going to give this guy a move um, again either way he's not going to do very well but we'll move him to here for his free move from the HQ these two guys are going to get free moves from the HQ as well possibly one of them because he's also getting a preservation move um, this guy will move to here, I think. The tanks don't check for infiltration moves and um, intense fire. So we can move this guy uh, three spaces, if we like. So let's move him to up to here and hope for the best because we don't want them going too close because there's four Japanese tanks on their way down this way and the HQ gets a free move himself which we will move to we'll move it to here I may, I may actually have to check the rules because that purple hex may already qualify as being Japanese occupied because usually they have a link there a little dotted line to show that these two are a group so that may qualify as being occupied so I could be making a mistake here putting him in there but I'll give it a go I'm sure it'll not be the last mistake I make um, let's see who else can we move can move these two guys again the tank can go a few spaces so we'll go one two three this guy mm. well this guy's gonna get a free move from this HQ anyway so let's move him and again it's an infiltration move so a red or a blue diamond is going to get this guy hit and it's a red diamond would you believe it so this guy gets a hit in his infiltration move you are now the unluckiest guy in the world congratulations and this guy can move to here see who else these guys 
Again, the tank can go, say, one, two to here. Uh, again, this guy, if he moves, he runs the risk of getting hit in an infiltration move, but we'll go for it. He can make a run for it. A red circle would be bad for him. And there's a red circle. Surprise! Surprise, surprise. Yay! Uh, okay, need to find F2-1. F2-1. Gets hit. Um, I don't think I moved this guy anyway, but I'll leave him there. No. I'll leave, move him to here. Um, this HQ gives three moves to these two guys. So... This guy is not going into intense fire of anybody, so he can move up to three hexes. Um, we'll say he makes a run for it and goes to here. And the tank... We'll say the tank goes to here, maybe. Just because... We're going to need probably tanks to take on tanks. Uh, HQ guy here. He can... Right, follow that guy. Okay, he can go that way. Um, okay, let's think about this for a second. Okay. Remember what I was saying about the terrain. We can't just walk through this jungle here. The only real way we can get our, to the other side is to either go up here, past this guy and go down the road, or kill this guy here, who is just right on the edge of the camera, and go through that little pass. So, probably going to have to send people in this direction, to the right. So, we'll send the tank, and we'll send this guy with them, so they've got their free moves, HQ is still there, this guy gets a free move, um, hmm. let's move... We still don't have a flamethrower to take on this guy, which is a bit of a problem. So what we're going to have to do is move the amphibious vehicle up to here. And we can move this guy because of a, the preservation move thing onto there. Um, we could also attack, obviously units and what have you, but I'm just trying to kind of uh, move and surround them as well because I'll come to it in a minute, but there's also you've got to take into account Japanese communications when firing, and that kind of thing um, HQ would give this guy a free move and these guys a free move two, two He's got a range of two as well, and from what I remember, um, these guys do have a flamethrower. So if we use a bunch of these guys to attack him, we then do have the flamethrower and the machine gun. So let's take him on. He's got his three. And I also need to remember he's in the jungle, which I forgot last time. And that means, it means that he becomes six and his depth marker stays as one. 
So he's now seven. And we do have the flamethrowers. And we do have a whole bunch of people that can take him on. So let's look at the chart. The chart is, do we have the weapons? Yes we do. We have the flamethrower in this guy. And if it came to it, that amphibious vehicle right next door to him counts as a flamethrower. So we do have the flamethrower, we do have the machine gun. He is doubled there because he's in the jungle. Six plus one, seven. And we can use a whole bunch of people. So we are easily more than double. But, and this is where we kind of get ripped off at the start, is attack strength at least double, yes. We have the weapons, yes. The unit and depth marker are revealed, which means that in turns one to four, the depth marker is eliminated and the unit is disrupted. And that's it. So we kind of get ripped off there. Had this been turn five or six, he would have been gone. So he got off easy there. Um, so most of these guys have had a turn there when they were fighting this guy. There's no more free moves. Mm. But we don't have any more free moves, but we still have two moves as part of the rules. So let's go for this guy we could go for this guy or we could go for this guy um, both are completely unrevealed um, in fact that guy is going to lose his you know that's because the guy we beat I was, gonna, I was thinking that he was the guy who was disrupted for the last turn um, hmm. let's go for this guy Let's go for this guy and we can use we can use this guy. We can use any of these people round about. Let's see what he's got. He's got one. And he's in let me just look at the terrain. I think that's brush. He's in brush. And we need to half the strength of the US infantry conducting a ranged fire. So we are kind of getting bumped down in strength. So if we're using this guy, um, you know, this guy, this guy, this guy, yeah, it'd be 7, 10, 12. So even then we're still more than double this guy. We need to FL, which is flanking manoeuvre, which means we need to be using units that have a, a distance between them. So we need to use this guy, this guy, this guy. If we try to use, say, these two, that's not a flanking manoeuvre. Those two would be. Those two would be. But two next to each other is not a flanking manoeuvre. So we're doing that anyway, that's okay. And we've got the bazooka, as far as I can see, yes. I hope, yes, this guy's got the bazooka. So we're more than double, even if we half our strength but still more than double so it's goodbye for this guy can't say I regret it um, so that's one of our two moves that we have left we still have one move left which we could go for this guy he's got a depth marker Mm. Well, we go, eh, eh, let's go for it. What the hell? Feeling lucky. We should be a first. So, we're going to use these guys. We've got seven, got three. So, we've got a whole bunch of people here that we can use. And this depth marker is two. We need a flamethrower. Luckily, we have this guy next door. Which counts as a flamethrower. Because um, neither of these guys are flamethrowers. But 
we could use that guy as a flamethrower. Um, MO is mortar. Do we have mortar? Yes, we do. This guy would have it. And bazooka. Yep. So, we've got the weapons. All good. Attack strength is going to be... Let's have a look. He's in a coral area, which is going to be probably good for him, but not for us. I'm pretty sure. Unit and depth strength are doubled. So he is now 6 and 4, 10. Hmm. Okay. So we've got 7 and 3 is 10. If we just go all out on this guy, then we would be more than, but not double. So, looking at the chart, we would be weapons, yes, attack strength greater but not double. The unit and the depth marker are revealed, which would be depth markers eliminated and the unit is disrupted. So again, eh, a semi win. Not much, but better than nothing. So he gets disrupted. As I said before, it's less people to shoot at us next time. And that is pretty sure that's it for the US action phase. As far as I can remember. No doubt there'll be more annotations and additions later. But anyway, that's it for the end of this whole turn. So the next one will be turn four.